Welcome to tonight's tale, a fairy tale theater podcast. We're going through every episode of Shelley Duvall's fairy tale theater in alphabetical order, sharing our thoughts and impressions along the way. I'm your host, Emily from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm joined by my always beautiful co-host, Eric. I'm Eric from New York. (laughs) And this month we're joined by our friend, Leon. And hey, it's Leon from Cleveland. (laughs) Pleasure to be here. We're always happy to have you join us. This month, we are reviewing the episode of The Pied Piper of Hamlin. Eric, do you have the background information on this episode? Yes, I do. The Pied Piper of Hamlin is from season four. It's episode three, and it aired on April 5th, 1985. Fun fact about the filming of it, the filming of it was actually on March 12th, 1984 to March 16th, 1984, and then March 19th, 1984 to March 20th, 1984. So it was kind of broken up a little bit. That's interesting. Yeah, which is not common for most of the episodes. It was directed and written by Nicholas Mayer, Mm -hmm. and he's famous for, Emily, take a guess, Nicholas what Mayer. has he written? What has he written? I know that name, but I'm I'm not placing it. I know that name. Many, many Star Trek films. Oh, gosh. Oh. <laughs> oh that explains so much. <laughs> and I can tell you the music is by James Horner, who famously wrote the score to Star Trek II, Wrath of Khan. But most people remember that he also wrote the score for Titanic. And won an Oscar for it. So this is a Star Trek heavy episode. That's one way That's to look interesting. At it. <laughs> <laughs> also, what I remember about this episode is it was filmed in Canada. I think it's the only one that was filmed in Canada. It was kind of a unique situation. And That's I, interesting. Yeah, yeah I recognize yeah, right. several of the actors being Canadian actors in the cast. Okay. I saw I saw it during the end credits, the casting agency or something was Canadian. That's interesting. Okay. That makes sense. I think they had originally planned to well, we'll get to it, but David Bowie was originally planned to be the Piper and Yes. They had arranged to film it in Canada, I think mostly to accommodate him. And then he pulled out at the last minute. Oh, is that what happened? Okay. So well I get ahead of self here what do we remember what is the very first thing that springs to mind when you think of the episode the pied piper of hamlin eric for me it's almost it's a very purist episode if that makes sense that's the word i would use for it purist episode because it follows the poem it's told in verse Mm. it doesn't stray very much from the original text like some of the episodes that we have reviewed in the past where it added a lot of filler information and filler plot to kind of spruce up the episode or make it stretch out a little bit more. It's a very purist episode. But the other thing that stands out for me is Eric Idle. I've never really seen Eric Idle as a leading man. I've only seen him as part of the troupe of Monty Monty Python. Python. (laughs) And I love him. I love him because I'm a huge Monty Python fan. I've seen Spam a lot. But I think it's so cool to see him as a leading man. I've never seen him, him in that way, at least. Totally agree. Leon? Kind of the same thing, that it's a fairly direct adaptation of the poem. I guess, honestly, one of the things that comes to mind when I think about it is that it's it makes some choices with, like, keeping, like, adding to the poem and fleshing it out and having, like, rhyming dialogue, which, for better or worse, is a thing that they did. Uh, and I did remember, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it, it happened. Um, it happened. <laughs> yeah, it, it happened. Um, yeah, but some of the things that I remember enjoying about it that still stood out to me were like the costumes and kind of like the, the set, just the general production design, I guess. The, the music, the James Horner score is pretty good. But yeah, the choice to add dialogue into the poem is what comes to mind for me. That's interesting. For me, the very first thing that sprang to my mind, like both of you, was Eric Idle. He's always been my personal favorite member of Monty Python. I've always loved him. I met him on really, my your favorite? Oh, always, always. I met him on okay. my 18th birthday. That was a whole thing. Um, <laughs> and let's not forget, he's a personal friend of Shelley's. And he wrote and narrated and directed the very first episode, The Frog Prince. 
course. So yeah. It's very nice to see him, like Eric said, as the leading man. And no, he's normally not the leading man. And it's at first, it seems like a very strange choice. But when you know the background where David Bowie pulled out at the last minute and Shelly had to ask her buddy Eric to step in. <laughs> and apparently Eric got on a flight and <laughs> flew to Canada and stepped into the role at the last minute. Yeah, I not 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 just um you know, being a leading role, but also I don't think I've ever seen him play like a, a dark character like this. Like this is, you know, more serious than the Monty Python sketches and stuff. That's and I think he did, he did great. I hadn't thought of yeah. that. He is kind of playing a more sinister character here. I also remembered off the top of my head, I remembered that he played dual roles. He played Robert Browning as well as the Pied yes. Piper. And I'm a, I'm a big Robert Browning fan too. The, just the poet. And I remember they really made him look like the real Robert Browning. I remember James Horner's score being very haunting. And I'm sorry to say it, uh, Leon, what you said surprised me because I remember the sets and the costumes being rather drab. And I I remember it, the episode being kind of boring. That's, that's what I wrote down before I did my rewatch. That was just my impression of how I thought of this episode. And fortunately, during the rewatch, I was pleasantly surprised surprised but the piper's costume i always remember being sharp and vibrant and beautiful everybody else yeah. was in a lovely shade of brown <laughs> i see i love that color palette though i think it's very like rustic and i think it was who were the sets based on it was like jan van eyck or something i'm not sure it's a good question it was yeah there's i don't I it was don't definitely giving it was definitely giving renaissance vibes right with the costumes and with the candles and the the colors used. It was very like burgundies and browns. It was very giving like Renaissance and I, I thought paintings. That, I thought it was very much a conscientious decision to do all of the townspeople and the art direction to be in more muted shades so the piper would really pop with his bright red and yellow. I get that. Yes. I, yeah. I understand that. It's not it's not thrilling to look at. You're right, but it it has an aesthetic. It does. Yeah. But it works. It worked. Like I said, I was pleasantly surprised during my rewatch. We start with, as always, our beautiful introduction by Shelly. And she's in the little rat cave set. I think this is one of the introductions where she looks most beautiful. I think yes. she's stunning in that introduction. Yeah, the, the hair. And the scarf. Yeah, this is, I think, absolutely my favorite Shelly look in the series. Yeah, her hair was glorious. She looked really beautiful and comfortable. She was holding a, it was meant to be a rat, but I think it was a mouse. Hello, I'm Shelly Duvall. Welcome to Fairy Tale Theater. Tonight's tale is based on the classic Robert Browning poem about a colorful traveler and a promise made. Woe to Hamlin if the piper's not paid. The Pied Piper of Hamlin. Eek. That yeah, always that. freaks me out. It always really? freaks me out. Yes, I don't know. I was like, oh, poor Shelly. <laughs> I, I was like, who handed her this mouse? It was like, <laughs> make, here you go, go. I really got the feeling she was fine with it. The one she was scared of, she told me, was the Jack and the Beanstalk one. <laughs> but I thought she looked beautiful and she looked comfortable. This is probably one of my favorite introductions that Shelly's done in the entire series. Now, we will get to it at some point, but I know this set that she's on is the set of a speech given by a rat. And yes, Julius Caesar rat. Yes, that speech I noticed after I finished my rewatch, it was not in the version I watched. So yeah, it's on my Playhouse videotape, but it is not on the DVD set. And I checked on YouTube. It's not there. <laughs> well, I don't remember exactly where it goes. So you guys will have to stop me when we get to that point, because I don't I remember it exists. I remember watching it as a kid and it was not in the version I saw. And I don't remember where it belongs. <laughs> Oh, we'll tell you. I, I love that. Yeah. I actually really do like that scene, even though it's very out of place. It really it really does make sense to take it out. But it is in the original text and yes. it is in the Playhouse video. And that's the one I grew up with. I grew up with Playhouse video. So it is kind of cool to point out the little parts that were edited out for the DVD set. So it is kind of interesting to go back and do that. I agree. 
I grew up with the Playhouse video too, so I remember it being there, but I don't remember where, and I don't remember much of it. I kind of felt a little I, robbed after I did my whole rewatch, and I went, wait, no. We'll talk about it when we get there, because I definitely put a note like where it occurs. So getting to the beginning of our episode, we start, we get a little title card saying England 1840, and the setting makes sense because we're going to have Robert Browning himself narrating the episode. Robert Browning, great English poet. He and his wife, Elizabeth Barrett Browning, probably my personal favorite poets of all time. Eric, you're an English teacher. You know, <laughs> you yes, know. and I, I love I love the original text. I actually, I think I told you, Emily, I had to well, for one of my poetry classes because I because I'm an FTT nerd. She asked us to memorize 30 verses of a poem, and I chose da 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 the Pied Piper of Hamlin. <laughs> That's amazing. I had the same assignment. I chose the walrus and the carpenter from Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> but I was like, you know what? Because I'm a visual learner. I was like, I just kept watching the beginning of the Pied Piper of Hamlin over and over to learn Ooh. the poem. So yeah. that's what I did. And I cheated. I that cheated is... a little bit. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> That's not cheating. Wow, but that's a great <laughs> choice. I just find it interesting. We had the same assignment. We both went into the fairy tales. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. So we've got Robert Browning and he is talking to his young charge, Willie, I guess his name is. And he's arguing. Little, about little Willie. I have a question. Does anybody know who Mr. Edward Fisher is? That's what it says in the credits for the other guy. And I, I did a cursory Google search and I couldn't find anything about that being a person associated with Robert Browning. Not to my knowledge. Yeah, it, I, it's just, it just seems weird to give him like a full name in the credits, Mr. Edward Fisher, and that not be a person. But like I said, I, I couldn't find anything. So I was just curious. I think the kid called him Mr. Fisher and Robert Browning called him Edward. So he was Edward Fisher. Uh, Maybe it was a nod to Carrie Fisher's dad. I don't know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, I digress. We've got Willie arguing about being allowed to stay up. Eric Idle comes in dressed as Robert Browning. He actually, I thought they the makeup did a very good job. He really looked like Robert Browning. He was dressed in- the beard. Yeah, yeah, he looked really good. And we've got Tony Van Bridge was the actor playing Edward Fisher slash the mayor. He's a British born Canadian actor whom I'm pretty sure I saw perform live on stage as a kid. He was a British actor, but he retired to Canada and he was working on the Canadian stages in Stratford, Ontario and Niagara-on-the-Lake. And I went to both of those when I was a kid in Michigan. We used to go to Stratford-on-Avon and we used to go to the Shaw Festival in Niagara-on-the-Lake. I think Tony Van Bridge actually passed away in Niagara-on-the-Lake, so I'm sure. That's I've where he passed that. away, yeah, 87 yeah. years old in 2004. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure I've, I've actually seen him perform live. I used to go to those festivals quite a bit. And he did a very good job in the dual role. He, he seemed yeah. to be playing himself. I loved him as the mayor. I thought he was great as the mayor. Oh my God, he actually showed up in an episode. Do you remember that ser that series from the 80s, the Ramona series based on the Beverly Query book? Yes. Oh, yeah, I think he, was, was, he a... was Mr. X. He played Mr. X in one episode. I think that was a Canadian show too, if memory yeah. right. Yeah, it was. Oh, That's so awesome. cool. Well, wow, he was like, he was around a lot in my childhood, I guess. <laughs> this scene, the big thing that Tony Van Bridge does is he introduces the saying, pay the piper, which he says it a couple times and Willie has never heard of it. He asks, what does it mean to pay the piper? Who's the piper? And Robert Browning sits down to tell him the story. And I just, I wrote down, I love this set. I love Eric sitting by the bedside and starting the story and the little boys all wrapped up, ready to listen. I thought, you know, sometimes the framing devices don't work. This one I thought really worked. I really liked this framing device. Hamlin Towns in Brunswick by famous Hanover City. The River Wesser, deep and wide, washes its wall on the southern side. A pleasanter spot you never spied. When begins my ditty? Almost 500 years ago, to see the townsfolk suffer so from vermin was a pity. Vermin? Rats! 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 